We use it all the time to heat emboss, but do you know you can use your embossing ink in other ways on your car making projects and paper crafts? Don't get me wrong, I love to heat emboss nearly everything, it's one of my favourite techniques, but why not stretch your supplies to get even more out of them? So today I'm showing you four creative ways to use your embossing ink with a variety of different tools and mediums. I'm Verity from the creative team and welcome to the channel. For the first technique we are going to create a watermark effect with your stamps. Now you can use this technique with a variety of stamps and I've chosen to use the bamboo rose set from Altenew. With this first card I'm placing soft stone cardstock from Gina K into my Misty and positioning a variety of stamps over the top. You can also do this with a background stamp but watermark stamping with smaller stamps is also a great way to produce subtle backgrounds for your focal elements to sit on. Once you're happy with the layout, ink up the stamps with clear ultra slow dry embossing ink from Well and stamp this onto the cardstock. When you lift the door of the Misty up, you are left with a tone on tone stamping as the embossing ink acts as a watermark. If you stamp this again, this would then darken and intensify your watermark, so that's totally your preference. Now I want to show you you can do this on dark coloured cardstock as well. Here I'm using eggplant cardstock from Gina K Designs. This embossing ink shows up brilliantly on dark cardstock as well. As you can see side by side, both cards show up the background design, but can give you two different looks based on the intensity of the coloured card. For the eggplant card, I added a white outline die cut from the Autonews Layered Rose die set, along with a heat embossed Birch Press Designs Hugs die cut sentiment in metallic and platinum embossing powder. I did several layers of the embossing powder to give it a smooth and 3D look to the sentiment. For the soft stone card, I trimmed this down and added a white strip along with a glitter strip made from sea glass embossing powder from WOW. I also die cut the happy sentiment from the matching glitter card stock using the Auto New Fine Alphabet dies. The next technique uses the watermark qualities of the ink, but instead with stencils. I'm using a tribal stencil from Kezia Art over some tranquil teal cardstock from Gina K Designs. Now to apply the ink you can do the direct to paper method or like I am here you can use a blending tool with a clean sponge on it. This allows you to control where you add your ink. Alternatively you could use a sponge dobber as well though the area of ink applied is going to be smaller. Personally, I prefer the blending tool as you're less likely to get harsher edges than applying it with the sponge dobber and you can apply more ink as well. Of course, the best part of lifting the stencil off is revealing the design. This card was finished with the second layer of the Auto New Layered Rose die set and that was cut out of white cardstock as well. And a heat and boss sentiment from the bamboo rose set was added. Again, I used the stunning metallic platinum embossing powder for the sentiment and I also added some white acrylic paint splatter to the background. For the third technique, we are going to do a watermark resist. Using one of the stamps from the Mama Elephant Wild Meadow stamp set, I'm stamping in the clear ultra slow drying embossing ink from WOW onto some Nina Solar White Classic Crest card. Now, I rotated the card so I could stamp the same design on the opposite side of the card as well. Next, you need to make sure that the ink has dried. Now, you can either set this to one side to dry naturally, or you can speed it up using your dual speed heat gun from WOW. I prefer using the slower setting of the gun as this helps reduce the amount of warping to the card. Once the ink has gone from shiny to match, you then know you are ready for the resist part of the technique. I'm using two distress inks here, milled lavender and sealess preserves to ink blend over the designs. Distress inks work really well for this technique, but you may need to experiment with any other inks that you have in your stash. As you start to blend the ink over the design, the watermark stamping will start to resist the ink. The design then starts to come to life. For a more intense appearance, you can blend more ink to show up the stamping. Or, initially when you're stamping the design in the clear ink, just stamp it several times to apply more ink to the card to saturate the stamping. 
So this card was kept quite simple, just using a stamp sentiment from the Avery Owl Thinking of You. And this was stamped in first and fine onyx black ink and mounted onto an eggplant card base. For the last technique, we are using the sticky nature of the embossing ink to allow us to add some mica powders to the stamped design. Now I'm stamping the outer mandala from the Concord and Ninth Mini Mandalas stamp set onto some Tranquil Teal cardstock in the embossing ink. Before stamping the next layer, I'm then adding mica powder over the top with a dry paintbrush. The first powder I'm using is the White Perfect Pals from Ranger. And as you add the powder, it will stick to the sticky embossing ink. But at this point, you're probably starting to think, oh, this looks like a mess. But don't worry. Once it's all covered, buff it away, any of the excess powder with a dry cloth, and this will just clean the design up for you. Now, I recommend keeping a brush allocated just for this technique because you want a dry brush and the mica powders will get in the bristles. So it saves you having to clean, clean it and getting a wet paintbrush. So then place the panel back into your misty and continue stamping the next few layers. I used two other mica powders for this card from Cosmic Shimmer. They were Lime Frost and Black Pearl. However, the Lime Frost doesn't really look that much different on this card stock from the actual Perfect Pearls colour. For the last layer, I just let, used the watermark nature of the card and just left it as is. Now when you move the image around, the light catches the mica powder and shines and it's really stunning in real life. You will want to waft the card through a fine mist of water just to set the mica powder so it doesn't brush off easily over time. The card was finished by mounting onto a soft stone card panel which had scored vertical lines downwards for some added texture. And the birthday sentiment comes from the same stamp set as the Mandela's and it was just heat embossed in the metallic platinum embossing powder again. Mica powders have a gorgeous shine to them when they catch the light and this technique is a great way to add subtle shine to your card without being overpowering. Hopefully this video today has either shown you a new technique to use with your clear ultra slow dry embossing ink or it has reminded you of an old technique you used to enjoy. Of course, the embossing ink will always serve as a staple for heat embossing, but why not combine one of those techniques today on your next card along with some heat embossing? Don't forget to share your creations in the WOW Embossing Powder Fans Facebook group. We run monthly challenges there where you can win a gift card. And the current theme is embossing glitters, which is fantastic. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when the next video is up. If you'd like to check out my personal channel, Pretty Little Button, I've also included a link here as well as down in the description box below. Until next time, happy crafting!